Today's date is October the 3rd, 2011. This is section 3.1, Math 1, accelerated Math 1, but it's the same thing for Math 1. Um, we're talking about cubic graphs. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to, how to graph them. Uh, we're going to talk about the end behavior. We're also going to talk about even and odd uh, a little bit. Um, I think that covers it. The first thing we're going to talk about are the, uh, is a basic graph. Here is a basic cubic function. It looks uh, kind of like a uh, parabola uh, that has been cut in half and then the left hand side has been flipped down. This side over here is exactly the same as this side, it's just been flipped down. This is the graph of y equals x cubed. Uh, this is section 3.1 again. This is the graph of y equals x cubed. This is the standard graph. All other graphs come from this graph. Okay, This is the first one that you need to have in your notes and you need to have it memorized. y equals x cubed. We have a point right here. Uh, you may be tempted to call it a vertex. I'm going to try to call it the turning point because it's not really uh, a vertex. Okay, The turning point is where the graph changes. Okay, That is the most important point. In this graph, what is the turning point? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Okay? Zero, zero. There's nothing on the inside, nothing on the outside. Okay? Eventually, our graphs are going to have all of these components. Cubed plus C. I know those are both C's. But those things are going to tell us all different things. So this is where we're headed, this amount of complexity. This is where we're at right now. Okay, there's all kinds of things that we can do. We can flip it, just like we flip, flipped a parabola. We can vertically shift it up and down. We can horizontally shift it left and right, and then we can stretch it or compress it or make it wider, just like we did it with a parabola. Okay? I'm going to erase all this, and then I'm going to talk about end behavior. Okay? Any questions so far? I'm giving you a second to write it down. got kind of some room to work. Let me, let me give some credit to this website. Uh, this is a college website. It's mathematics, plural, mathematics.naylan.d. Nayland.school.nz. Is that New Zealand? Uh, I, no, I'm not. Maybe. They were very nice on their homepage. They said they were open to sharing and that uh, anybody could use their site and you could, you know, it was a teacher exchange. So I did check with that before I put it on YouTube. All right, so hold on. So now let's talk about in behavior. Okay, write that down. This is not something that uh, we've talked about before. Behavior. B E A H. No, there's no B E H. There's an A on beautiful. B E H A V I O R, is that right? Yes. Behavior, in behavior. All right. The way that we write it is we say as X approaches infinity, then what is Y approaching? Okay, in this graph, we're talking about this graph. Negative. Hold on, hold on. As X approaches infinity, here's the X axis, right? Here's the X axis. As x approaches infinity, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, where is the graph going? Well, here's the y-axis. What is it approaching? Positive infinity. The graph is going up and up and up and up and up and up forever. So as we go this way, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what is happening with y? It's also approaching positive infinity. That's how the problem would be stated. It would say, as x approaches infinity, you would say y approaches infinity. David? Is that in D? End behavior. E N D. Oh, end yeah. behavior. Yeah. End behavior. As x approaches negative infinity, meaning to the left, as we go this direction, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, 
right? Negative infinity. What's happening to the graph? It's going down. It's also going down. It's also approaching negative infinity. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So for this graph, as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Okay, this is called in behavior. Questions on in behavior. There's some questions in your homework that deal with in behavior. You need to know about. It. We'll talk more about this in just a minute. All right. Let me get out of this by doing that, and then let's come on down. All right. So there's your parent graph. Y equals x cubed. That's called a cubic function. All right. So here's the first. Thing that we can do. If we change a, a is the number in front of the x cube, I'm going to move in just a second. If we change it into a negative, what do you think happens to the graph? It flips. Now what does that mean? How does it flip? Well, let's look. Watch. There's the flip. Eyes up here. There's regular. And when I put the negative in front, watch. There it flips. Okay? There's positive. There's negative. So copy that down. Y equals negative X cubed. You need to know what that looks like. That should be a note card. When you're making out your note cards for this week, that should be a note card. The first one should be Y equals X cubed. The second one should be Y equals negative X cubed. Okay? Let's talk about the end behavior here. As, whoops, uh-oh. As X approaches positive infinity, what's happening with Y? It's approaching positive. Careful. Negative infinity. I'm sorry, sorry. With this one. Oh, it's not going to let me. Let me get out of this. Let me get out of this. Close this. Hit this. Now let's talk to you. All right. As X approaches uh, positive infinity, what is happening with Y? It's approaching negative infinity. It's approaching negative infinity. Very good. We're doing, this is of this graph here. Y equals negative X cubed. That's the one we're talking about. Likewise, on the flip side, as X approaches negative infinity to the left, what's Y doing? Approaching positive infinity. Y is approaching positive infinity. Okay? Questions? So what does the A do? Just like it did with absolute value? Just like it did with parabola? It flips. It flips it or it inverts it. But you have to know what that means. Did the turning point change at all? What's the turning point? Zero, zero. Still zero, zero. So we haven't shifted it vertically. We haven't shifted it horizontally. We're fixing to do that now. Any questions? Any questions? I'm ready to move on. Everybody have this copy? Yes? Um, how is the X approach positive on the bottom? I know. I'm just going back and forth. Say it again. Um, on this one or the other one? Okay. How is X approaching positive on the family? But it's going to the left. As I go to the right, right, as the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger, what's happening with the graph? It's going down and down and down, all the way to negative infinity. So as x gets bigger, y is getting smaller. On the flip side, as x gets smaller, what is y doing? Getting bigger. Getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Good question. Anybody else? All right, let's move on. What are we going to do first? Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Uh, nope, sorry. Oh, vertical. vertical. Alright, so here's your standard graph. C is zero right now. This is vertical shift. Draw it on your paper. Mm. Vertical shift. Y equals X cubed. C in this case is zero. It's the number on the outside. It's the number on the outside. Alright? So here we go. If y equals x cubed plus 2, when I click right here, what do you think is going to happen to the graph? Where's the turning point going to go? Is it going to go up 2? Is it going to go down 2? Is it going to go right 2 or left 2? What do you think? We're talking about vertical shifts, so we're saying it's going to go up or down. Do you think that positive 2 is going to make it go up 2 or down 2? Up 2. Up 2, correct. Watch it. There's regular. There's plus 2. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You move the turning point to 0, 2, and then it's up on the right, down on the left. Everything stays the same. Watch it. There's standard. There's when we have a vertical shift up 2. 
All right. What do you think the next one's going to be? X cubed minus 3. What's that one going to be? It's going to go down 3. It's going to go down 3. All right. There's standard. There it is at 0, 0. When I have a negative 3 on the outside, that makes it go down 3. It didn't go left and right any. It just went down 3. Questions? Anybody have any questions? All right. So here we go back to standard. What's going to happen with this one? We've got a negative out front, and we have a positive one. It's going to be. It's going to change to. It's going to go up one, but then what's going to happen? It's going to invert. It's going to flip. You're right, but I'd rather you say invert. Watch. Up one, and invert. See it again. Up one, and invert. Draw that on your paper. There's four more examples for you. That's four more note cards that you could have, and you flip through those note cards every night this week, every night next week. Okay, some of you, this last test identified, some of you need better study habits. And that involves 30 minutes a night, every night, on Math 2. Making note cards, rewriting your notes, watching the YouTube videos, coming to extra help. Questions? Anybody want to see any of these again? Anybody need them again for their notes? Yes? The last one? This one here, what's going to happen? You tell me first. Down three. There's standard, and there's down three. See how the turning point went from zero, zero to zero, negative three? It went down three. Okay. What, how much time are we at? Love it. 11.42. Okay. Let me know when it gets close to 15. All right, so we did vertical shift. What are we going to do now? Horizontal shift. Horizontal shift. What's horizontal mean? Left and right. Right? Like the horizon. Horizontal, left and right. So notice now we're talking about stuff on the inside. We hadn't done anything on the inside. It's always been zero. If I put stuff on the inside, and this one is y equals x plus 2 cubed, what do you think that means? What is that positive 2 going to mean? Is it going to mean 2 to the right or 2 to the left? Do you think we're going to do the same or we're going to do the opposite? The opposite. We're going to do the opposite, just like we did with parabolas in vertex form, just like we did with absolute value. If there's a 2, positive 2 on the inside, we are going to change that, and we're going to do left 2. Watch. Watch the turning point. It goes 2 to the left. This website is awesome. <laughs> Keeps me from having to graph all these hundreds of graphs. And they're accurate. They're 100% accurate. And look how nice that is. Two to the left. All right, what about this one? Let's talk about this one. X minus two. What is that going to make it do? going to go two to the right. going to get a horizontal shift of two to the right. The turning point went from zero, zero to two, zero. I shifted it two to the right. Boy, there's the original. There's two to the left. There's two to the right. Okay. Anybody else? All right, so how about this one? What's going to happen here? It's going to invert. And it's it's going to invert, and what else is it going to go? Going to the left. It's going to go to the left. How far? One. It's going to go left one. Watch it. There's original. There's one move to the left, and then it inverts. See that negative? See what the negative makes you do? The negative makes you flip it. Okay? Questions? Any questions? All right, now let's see if we can put it all together. Would you have to solve for x and y? No, not right now. We're just graphing. This first couple sections is all about graphing cubics and square roots and um, hyperboles. We're going to graph all, you know, just some kind of other things other than parabolas. We're going to talk about in behavior, domain and range, all that good stuff. All right, so now we're going to put it all together. This is as hard as it gets. This is as complicated as I can make a cubic. What do you think is going to happen on the first one? This is standard, right? We're at 0, 0, and we're normal. What's going to happen here? It's going to go, to go right one, one to the right. It's going to go to the right one, and it's going to do what? Go up, up two. two. All right, everybody watch. Eyes up here. Right one and up two. Let's watch. Boom, there it is. It went to the right one and up two. All right, see it again? Right one and up two. See it again? Right one and up two. The turning point shifted. All right, what do you think is going to happen here? It's going to go to the left two. And left two one. and? Down one. Down one. Left two and down one. Just like vertex form or parabolas, just like absolute value. 
Opposite, same. Opposite, same. Question. Yeah. You're at fit. We're at 15. Yes. All right. Let me finish this, and then I'll have you hit the red button. Thank you. All right. What about this last one here? What about this last one? What's it going to do? So here we're back at normal. We're going to do what to the four? What's that going to make us do? Go to the right. Four. We're going to have a horizontal shift of four to the right. What is the negative two going to tell us? Down. Down, down two. And what's the negative going to tell us out front? Invert. It's going to invert. Very good. Good terminology. Four to the right. Down two, and we invert. It. And we invert it. There's normal. There's that. Okay? Question. It's a great website. Are we ever going to have to draw these? Yes. That's what. That's the whole goal. It's for me to give you that problem and say you graph it. And you, you've got to know standard. And then you've got to be a... And not only can you graph it, can you tell me how this graph is different than that graph? Right? Than the one we started off with, y equals x cubed. How is this graph different? Well, we have a horizontal shift of 4 to the right. We have a vertical shift of 2 down, and it's inverted. If you can describe it in that much detail, then that tells me you really understand cubics, and you really understand how to graph it. All right, hold on. Uh, Marlo, hit, hit the red button. Let's turn it off. See what happens.